just quieting down, baby. Per, per, per capita export value. Library. Minister, are you embarrassed by your behavior today? There's, there's a lot of bleeding hearts around. Do you have the fortitude or the gold ass to stand up and come across here and say that to me, you son of a bitch? Hey, hey, hey. Just watch me. He certainly went too far, Mr. Speaker, when he st- I saw him stick his tongue out. Contemptuous disregard. More than a slab of bacon talking here. The disappointment you also feel is my responsibility. I lost my temper. What is the nature of your thoughts? The word was F-A-R-T. Hello and welcome to another episode of Canadian Politics is Boring. My I feel like, no, 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 no. I, every time you do the intro, it's always so melancholic and just kind of, it's just, just how, give, it's just, just my persona. Yeah, but just come on, man. Just for our audience, just give a little bit of oomph. Just like picture someone's tickling your balls while you do this. Okay, make let's it, try it again. Just make it, more, you want me what? to make it more North American? Yeah, baby. Let's like no go on a radio morning show. It's seven in the Hi, morning. Everyone. I'm Reese Waters and with me is Jesse Harley. This is Drive Time, uh, where we talk about Canadian politics while you drive home in traffic and try not to hate your life. So, <laughs> Jesse. Oh, the weather's coming up soon. It's raining and it's gross and you're going to hate your life for the next 18 hours. Do you have kids at home? Good. Go to work and ignore them. Coming up next is at 17 minutes of Alanis Morissette straight here on the Fox 32.6 FM. If you want to win uh, $50 and a gift card for um, Swiss Chalet, then call 888-888-721-5697-798-321. And you can ask her, answer our three questions. If you can answer the three killer questions, you get the top prize. If you don't, then... uh, Someone has sent your house to beat you up and put you in a potato sack and throw you off the bridge. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesse, did you see something in the news recently that we should pass shock jock style comment on? That we should what? Shock jock commentary. Uh, I I, I don't know. I don't really read the news. Don't watch the news. There we go. This is why we couldn't do this style of show. Oh yeah, right. (laughs) That that Joe Joe Biden. Did you see his speech the other day? Something like that. No, what? Yeah. What's, anyway, what's this this is Canadian politics is boring. It is not uh, drive time radio. It yeah. is a podcast, and and you're listening to it. Thank you for that clarification. Oh, yeah, that's go. for our audience. Okay, anyone is new? Yeah, hi. My I, name is I've, Jesse. This is Reese. Hi. What's up? Um, I've got a. I've got a. Um, are we going to do a, a quick? Is this the STD zone? Are we? No, are no, we, no, no. I no? mean, I think it was. This is a, a very weird start to this episode. But I think. I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should postpone entering the STD zone um, because sure. we had we and just go straight to a speak pipe we had. Sure, speak pipe for those of you who are new is like a little voicemail. You can send it to us anonymously, or you can leave your your name if you want to, and uh, it's just a quick way to say hi. Um, and this ton of enthusiasm from from this listener. I'll just play it. Seems All right. really nice. I'm very excited. Hello, Reese and Jesse. My name's Justin, and I'm from Whitehorse, and I've been listening to you guys for a couple of years, and I've got to say. I love listening to your show. Oh. Now, my wife, she hates it, but that's okay. because she hates Jesse's laugh, Fuck. and also the humor gets on her nerves. <laughs> but me, I'm immature, and it's right up my alley. So with that in mind, I'd like to make a recommendation. Okay. One of the ways that I think that you could cover new content in your show is crossover episodes, and I've heard some great ones from you guys. But the one episode or crossover that I'd really like to hear is you sitting down with Secret Life of Canada hosts, Leah and Phelan. And the reason I think that is because you guys have covered some of the same material as those two podcast hosts. And I think it'd be great just to see you come together and hear you come together and figure out what kind of episode you do on the air, um, on the podcast. Anyways, you know what I mean. So think about it. Keep up the good work. Look forward to more terrible baby eating jokes and take care. There we go. That was what, was his, long what, was it, what was his name again? Justin. Justin. That's what I thought. Thank you so much, Justin. Uh, fuck you, Justin's wife. So that was nice of, <laughs> of, of Justin. Yes, to... Two points. Yes, we'd love to do a crossover episode. I don't know them, but we should try. Uh, and two, leave your wife. Yeah, that's honestly what it is. I love how people like, come on, man. Like don't I was all angry. excited. Don't, don't, I'm not that angry. Was a, that was a nice one. That was a nice was one, a nice... but it was like, did you have to, did, did he have to tell me, did he have to tell me that his wife hates my laugh? 
hates it. Really? Was that really necessary? No, I don't well, fucking she, think she, it was. She could, she could hear it all the way in White Horse. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> that was for you, Justin's wife. That was just for you. Uh, please keep listening to the show, Justin, even though we said horrible things about your wife. <laughs> I'm sure she's not. Well, so I'm got, not done. <laughs> she's just got a very different just gonna, taste in humor. She's going to so. pepper it through this episode and maybe a few more episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's lovely. She's just got a different sense of humor. And, uh, 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 yeah. 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 There we go. Uh, no, let's, let's reach out to them. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, that's cool. And thanks for the really nice message, Justin. Um, oh, thank, thank you. And your enthusiasm um, and mm-hmm. suggestions. And yep. uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. fine, I guess. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, no, let's, let's fuck it. Let's reach out to, let's reach out to them. What do you think? And do a, and, I, and I, see if I, we... I, 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 yep. I, I did used to listen to that show ages ago and it was really good. Um, and then, um, I don't know, you know, when you just keep finding new podcasts and you've got half, half episodes listened to, it kind of fell into the half listened to pile of ones that I really enjoyed, but never got back to. So do you mean half of an episode? No, I finished my episodes, Reese. Jesus. What I don't, I'm, monster a, are you? I'm currently re- halfway through reading five books and 15 <laughs> podcasts. I'm halfway through listening to. So oh, speaking of books, the power, uh, power I, of ADHD. I have a new, I have a new segment for our show. Uh, I want you to put some some intro music to this, please. This is called Jesse's Book Review, where Jesse reads a book once a decade, thinks it's the only book ever written, and talks about it. Today, what book did you, what book did you read this Jack decade? I finished The Lost Apothecary, which was great. Awesome. It's uh, it's two stories in one. It takes place in present day England, uh, where a woman finds a tiny apothecary bottle of vial um, on the River Thames and does some research as to where it came from. And then it cuts back to 1791, where this apothecary owner runs a poison shop secretly in the back of a, a building. And it's just, it's a really neat story and you should read it too. Go and check out uh, my my other uh, book review from the, from the early 2000s. Uh, I look forward to hearing, to, to, to talking to you again, dear listener, in another 10 years when I decide to read another book. <laughs> There we go. Done. There you go. That was great. There you yeah, go. Good. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for doing that for me. Okay. Should we talk about th- this? Is a uh, this is a good good episode. You're gonna like this. Uh, yeah. Fuck it. Okay. I'm saying as I a mean, good like you said that you stuff. say that with every episode and every episode is not a stellar fucking episode. You know. So I still. I've, yeah. We can't yeah. always have wolf gates and fruit machines, and you know we're always we're gonna have ones that are a bit more serious. They aren't just as surreal. Oh, is this another serious one? Is this another? No, it's not. This, this okay. one's this one's inspirational. You know how you avoid the news because the news is full of bad news. I mean, yeah, it's I okay. T- to be fair, like I've I've grew I've grown up with uh, anxiety, a lot of anxiety, and the news is just like, hey, here's a train wreck. Look at all those people that died. Nothing you can do about it. And that's that's pretty much the news, you know? Like it's not like your friend calling you up like, "Hey, I need you to help move a body." I'm like, "Wow, that's that's really fucking heavy uh for 2 in the morning for me to process right now, but like I can do carry. something on that. I can either come and help you move a body or call the police and end a friendship." Right? Like with the, but with the news, it's just like, "Hey, here's something to make you feel bad. Have you enjoy enjoy your breakfast now. Bye." Like that's so fuck the news. Fuck it. Fuck it. Okay. Well, let me tell you, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of some... This is what happens when I have too much coffee. Sorry, go ahead. Have you ever heard of a place called Madison Hat? I have. Madison Hat, Alberta. Yeah. Have you been there? Uh, I might have driven through it. Yeah. Famous for having lots of gas, like natural gas, and a population of roughly 65,000 people. I'm trying to think, does but, Madison Hat have a lot of um, dinosaur... What are they called? The things. Not bones. The fossils. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they do. I've never been there. I like the name. It's a cool place name. It is a cool place, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and it was in the news in the last year uh, for a really good reason and an amazing reason. Uh, a really inspirational reason. Do you know why? Any guesses? No. You know damn well I don't. So uh, this episode I mean, is does called, it have something to do with oil and gas? No. This, no. This, this episode is called The City That Ended Homelessness. Okay. I'm intrigued. So, last year, Madison Hat announced it had become the first city in Canada to reach functional zero chronic homelessness. Okay. This is last year they said that they would attempt this. No, last year they achieved it. Oh, wow. 
Okay. Well, I mean, which, how which long? I, how long did? How long did they have to do it before it's considered um, a success? How long? Well, they, 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 they I mean, they could it. just they could, they could just like gather up all the homeless people, put them in a hotel for a night, and say they did it. You yeah, know, like, so, so <laughs> it's kind of like that's the whole point, though. It changes. Some months they're not functionally uh, kind of. Uh, homelessness isn't zero some months and other months it is sometimes it fluctuates but they track it like every month um and they they achieved it for for that month and have been kind of like switching between achieve maintaining that achievement and kind of sometimes the, the homeless population grows and then it shrinks down again so um it's which blows my mind because i think most people think that homelessness is it's kind of part of life and is tragic and sad but there's always, as far as I can remember, it's always been a thing. Um, I don't, so it's, I think it's pretty bad in Halifax right now. It is pretty bad in Halifax, but then you go to Toronto and Vancouver and it's, you know, it's, it's, I would say it's way more extreme in Canada than I ex- ever experienced in the UK. There's homelessness in the UK, but not to the level of Canada and really? I think the US is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's way worse. Wow. Well, I mean, we are experiencing a home, uh, a housing crisis, at least in Nova Scotia and f- I guess from what I'm kind of gleamed from news articles that I try not to read, uh, the rest of Canada is kind of going in that direction too. So I don't know. We're not well, talking about housing prices, but so, I suppose it's kind of connected. So 235,000 people in Canada experience homelessness in any given year. And that's, Jesus. A rough, that's roughly 25,000 to 35,000 people on any given night are homeless. That's insane. There's a lot wow. of people. That's crazy amount of people. It's like everyone on PEI. Out off when it's not tourist season, obviously. Just, that's how we know PEI, uh, the yeah. homeless island. <laughs> yeah, exactly. just, that's where we put all of our homeless people is on PEI. Because they haven't got the yeah. $50 to leave, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> they're, all, they're all sleeping underneath the Confederation Bridge, yeah, from exactly. PEI to the mainland. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, functional zero... <laughs> Um, is a is a milestone, but it has I just to be got this amazing image in my head of like thousands of boats and dinghies all tied together with like tarps over top to create like a false like, like a, water a stretching roof, like water world, but like with tarps and rafts and dinghies and like little wooden walkways that span the entire length of the Confederation Bridge from New Brunswick to PEI, or is it? Is it Nova Scotia? I think it's New Brunswick. And like, it's all underneath the bridge to help with shelter and shade and stuff like that. And that's, oh, that'd be, that'd be a fucking cool movie or TV show. Maybe I should start writing that. They don't have to be homeless. Go. Just, yeah, not at all distracted. So, anyway, um, <laughs> so, so, um, functional, uh, Functional zero basically means there's enough services, housing, and shelter and beds for everybody who needs it. Um, Whether or not they are taking advantage of it. Yeah, and in this approach, emergency shelters are meant so to be fun- temp- functional. Temporary. Functional zero. Functional zero yeah, meaning yeah, yeah. like, hey, it's here. We, we can't. We, it, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't. That sort exactly. Of thing. Like, exactly. Okay. So you can't like. There's there's a certain, and we'll get to that. There's a certain percentage of people who, for whatever reason, are homeless and um, refuse help to a certain extent, and that's a right. very small minority. Okay. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, scaremongering around around that and generalization across homelessness, and it looks very different in some cases. Like it could be a family sleeping in a car is not necessarily what you imagine with you know uh, walking through like a downtown area what you see or you know people with serious addiction so it all started in 1998 when the mayors of a lot of canada's largest cities declared homelessness was a natural disaster in the country what year was this 1998 okay well and the albertan government decided to give 16 million dollars to address the crisis um and in uh, Medicine Hat, roughly 13% of people in Medicine Hat live in poverty, which is almost double the average in Canada of 6.4. Wow. And that's the sta- that's the latest stats I could find. It fluctuates, obviously. So, obviously, um, homelessness was an issue. And then, like, a few years later, nothing really happened. And then a few years later, in 2009, they com- Medicine Hat committed to ending, ending homelessness and developing a five-year plan. Um, and I know we hear politicians say this stuff all the time. Hey, we've just did this thing and it's going to stop this. And um, But this one, this was like an oh, actual oh, yeah. actual plan. Um, that they put forth and put money in and actually went forth with. All right, that's, that's and, rare. And, uh, but, but, and the crazy thing is what they did was they 
all the other cities, to a certain extent, and you see Halifax doing this, they're managing homeless populations. So they're not trying to solve it. They're just managing them and moving you them sh- on. You should have fucking seen what Halifax did to manage the homeless population last year. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you were there. Oh, I, I was there. Corner, I riot, f- but, um, oh, my God. You so like, if, if you, but I, I, I didn't get tear gassed. I, I didn't get tear gassed. I, I nearly got to. So like I was, I'll just quick recap. This is uh, about a year ago. Um, there was... Uh, some someone tenting in a library and they brought forth like a huge swarm of cops to remove this man and the massive massive retaliation from the public came to kind of protest it and it there was this growing building tension and i was there because like half a fucking alvax was there to check it out and i was filming it and i was filming it for I was street, live streaming it on our on our um our podcast instagram and then they arrested the man arrested him and and took him to the back of the van and then all these people started swarming uh not swarming but like well you know uh encroaching on the van getting just kind of like surrounding the cops in the van and all that stuff and i just something in me said i need to back away right now and i i just kind of walked down the street to a fair distance away where it was nice and safe. And it was just at that moment, someone screamed tear gas and the fucking chaos that ensued Reese was insane. There was like, it was just madness. So, but like, yeah, that's a, I think I went over that last last year <laughs> i think the video is still on the instagram feed if people it is to too it. if you want to go check it out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. anyway that's, and, uh, so, so nice little, nice little stroll down memory lane yeah 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 it's good <laughs> and our, our like, city dealt with homelessness yeah how they managed it in managed how they managed homelessness yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um so what they did was they decided that they needed to deal with the homeless population with a housing first philosophy. So housing would come before the priority of mental health or the treatment of addictions because they believed that you can't solve those issues unless a person has permanent and stable housing. I mean, is that based off of any evidence? It's an interesting theory. Well, I probably, I mean, <laughs> you, should ask, you should ask medicine hat. Um, but but I, th- I think I think the idea is that you know if if you don't get somebody off the streets, you can't expect their mental health to improve. Okay, all right, that's interesting. And, and if you want to deal with addictions, then you know um, how do you expect them to to kind of overcome that and uh, tr- transform their lives if you keep them trapped in a position of homelessness? So if you get them stable permanent housing, so they're not um, they're not provided with a free space or like government owned housing. Instead, what happens is the city will work with the individual to secure affordable permanent housing for those people. Um, depending on their needs, needs, it might be like a private apartment a house or like a long-term hotel room or a, a lot rental for like an RV or um, um, like a trailer or something. Um, and they, they, they work with them on a personalized basis for what would suit them best based on their needs, including like, do they have pets? Have they got kids? That kind of thing. Um, and they have to pay 30% of their income in rent. Um, who, and the the homeless subsidy. person or the government has to? Who's paying? Uh, the, the homeless person who now is housed. Okay. So, so whatever you're earning, I mean, you Mike, just, what if they just, what if they have no fucking money or income? Like they're, you know, well, they will have are... like some kind of, um, subsidies or, um, they, they, they would have kind of government, um, welfare to a certain extent. So 30% of that would go, um, to, to, to cover it. Okay. All right. Or they would say to you, Hey, we'll put you in a long-term hotel room. We can then work out, like, sort out kind of um, if you're entitled to any subsidies or help you get a job. And then once you get a job, we'll move okay, into this Okay, right. So take- it's not just like, hey, you, come on, get off the parks. Let's go get you to an apartment. I'm homeless and I have no job or money or food. That's fine. Here's your new place. You owe a thousand dollars in rent now. That's only 60% of what it no, is. No, no, but, but it's not. <laughs> but it's not. It's 30% of your income. So if you earn $100 a week, you pay $33 in rent. Oh, 30% of your income? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Wow. Okay, well, that's... Okay, so here's a tip to any homeless people who are in Medicine Hat who uh, who are listening to this podcast. Uh, start a corporation. Have that corporation take all of your income and pay yourself like $100 a month. That's your income. So your rent is only 30 bucks a month. Fuck the government. Fuck them. Anyway, well, please continue. I mean, yeah, <laughs> take, it, take advantage of a system that's there to help the most needy. Well done. Fuck, fuck the good fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah. So because because of this system, since 2009, uh, 1,675 people who were homeless or at risk of being homeless have been housed, and that includes 424 children. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, well, that's, that's, that's a beat. Shelter use has dropped 64%. Okay. Um, I mean, and, a shelter is a bad... A, is, Oh, it's just the, just the fact that people don't, don't need people shelters don't, as like, much. Yeah, 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 the number of people <laughs> right. needing shelter. So it means there's space. A lot of the time you hear about people queuing up outside shelters to get a space, and there's never there's not always enough space. Um, so that's a good sign. It means there's probably space in a lot of the shelters if you've reduced it by that much. Right. Um, they still keep them open, but it just means that you know, it's, not as, um, it's not like a fight to get a space. And do you think... Do you think this method is more expensive or less expensive than, than the current standard of just managing the population managing okay. uh i'm gonna take a an educated guess knowing you that this is less expensive ah oh, i wanted you to say the other one would be wrong <laughs> i think it's more expensive reese no. far more expensive so, <laughs> so they worked out that to provide housing with this method costs between twelve thousand and thirty four thousand a year per individual Okay. Whereas the cost of providing resources to people on the street where you're dealing with uh, the police, shelters, drugs, all the other things is 120,000 per person a year. Wow. Seriously? So it's, it's like a fraction of the cost just to provide affordable housing and to manage it that way versus um, keeping people on the streets and, and dealing with uh, the government, dealing with all the complex issues that come with it. Wow. Well, okay. To be fair to Halifax, um, like a year later, they did dedicate like a large parking lot to um, to some shelters. They they put up some pop up shelters from basically trailers, uh, like really nice looking, large, very large uh, kind of amalgamated trailers, and they they kind of gave it its own power, and they strung up some like camp lights along of it, and uh, and they're from what I understand, they're for, I don't understand. Uh, the in, ins and outs of of that space, but it just shows to me like, oh, the the city is trying something rather than um, we need this space for condos. What do you mean? There's homeless people in tents there. Get the cops down there and get rid of the, the homeless people. Where do you want us to put the homeless people? We don't care. The condos need to go there. That was pretty much what we were doing. So the fact that we're trying literally anything at all other than get the cops, beat them up, and move them to a completely separate park for now is encouraging but uh i'm i'm always of the mindset that if you're gonna try something if you have a problem and and it's a problem that is pressing look to others who have already fucking solved this problem and then no. implement what they've solved like it doesn't have to be an original idea every fucking time and this this gets me like so the whole also fucking gun go the whole thing it's just, oh, so complicated you go yeah it is but it was until is someone solved it <laughs> driving, a, driving a car is complicated but you still drive around in one while drinking a massive right? coffee i won't get into this because this is a very very long side uh like sidebar but like the whole gun debate in the states drives me crazy not because it's complicated but because countless other countries have implemented solutions that have fucking worked and instead of and the, the states are just like well we can't because it's complicated because of this and that and this and that like how about we just do what other countries have done yeah but what about this they thought of that problem too and they solved that problem look just look to france <laughs> look to japan look to whoever like they won't fucking do it and it drives me like well, stop trying to be original stop trying to come up with original ideas and original problems everyone else has already thought of these fucking problems and solved them just, just do what other just, people have already been doing just, oh. just literally look you don't even have to look that far it's in canada medicine hat just go there and speak to the people at medicine hat and go right how do you do this and you save this much money every year okay even if you want to do it even if you look at this purely from a calculating money point of view where you want you want you know, oh, we should be charging less tax. Otherwise, you know, we should bring the budgets down. If you're kind of like fiscally conservative, well, then you can't even argue with the money. No, it's. It, I think it's all ego. I think, honestly, I think it's. I think it's. Uh, it has a lot to do with ego. The ego of politicians who want to come up with something creative and original that people can be like, "Oh, look, it was the the mayor, the mayor Bobby, Bobby the mayor came up with the idea, and it was a completely original idea, all his, all hail Mayor Bobby." Like, no, fuck that. Just, just no. do what other people have been doing that works. Just exactly. Just, like, why? Why not? Just fucking fuck your ego. Fuck it. 
But, uh, but I'm not it's, upset. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's, it's, it's also um, last year, November last year, the city was no longer at zero unhoused pop, uh, people. So basically there was a, a surge and they were roughly within that month, 40 people sleeping rough in, in the city. But they, they, they at the state of being able to track those people and they check in on them all the time. So it's a, all, But it's a system that is... Like it's or, an organic system that's going to ebb and flow. I'm guessing. Exactly. Right? Exactly. There's no. You could never solve. So. So apparently, like of those forty people, there are seventeen who just flatly refuse any help at all and just want to kind of be left alone, essentially, and right. live on the streets. Which you, you can, you know, you're going to get a percentage of people who, of are, course, yeah, you know, who whatever life experience they've had has led them to be there, whether it's addiction or trauma or whatever it might be. That's going to happen. But f- fundamentally, people who are just desperate to have somewhere to live are. Salt that's solved really um uh, but even then this this system means now that they know who those people are and there are there's spaces available for them they just gotta they just check in on them every once in a while and go hey just you know this is bad over there or if you need this or you need that or medical attention we're here for you so it means that the people working are freed to make sure that as the as it does ebb and flow with homeless people coming through and things developing that they they're actually around and present and able to focus on just reaching out to those people and saying there's always a bed for you if you need one if you want that's amazing that's amazing which is a very different approach from how it's not kind of reactive to the problem it's kind of it's being really proactive in terms of solving it you know i gotta say this was not a mind-blowing uh, episode filled with uh, historical alcoholics, um, but it was a very touching one, honestly. And it was, it was, uh, you know what I liked about this? It wasn't depressing for depressing sake. It it actually had like, a, like, oh shit, our government did something positive that worked. Like, what the fuck? When do you ever hear that happening? You know, I so know. That's- and it's a, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good news story. It's a good news story. I like good news stories. I do. Yeah. There we go. So I, I was excited about this one. I know it's a different kind of episode, but when you see a good news, it's so easy to talk about how bad people are and the crazy stuff people did. But when you see a good news story, it's worth talking about a good news story. I want to I want to talk about what what we were talking about just a little bit a while ago about our your ego and wanting to be creative and just saying fuck you know f- fuck it to your ego and going and doing what's already worked. I I, I want to encourage our listeners to really think about that in your own life. We we live in a day and age where instantaneous access to the world's information is on these tiny little rectangular devices in our pockets at any given fucking time and we use it to look up funny videos of cats okay so like if if you want to run a business if you want to be a famous instagrammer if you want to be a famous youtuber if you want to be a blogger if you want to open up a fucking laundromat whatever it is don't be fucking creative about it don't try to think of original don't be on the fucking dragon's den think of the latest you know like fuck your ego fuck it go and find someone who's already done it and is teaching a course on how to do it pay them how to do it and then do what they tell you it's just just stop being original fuck i wouldn't i wouldn't pay for a course um that's because you try to be original (laughs) no no no, i just i just find it for free somewhere else oh yeah that's true yeah podcasts are a great source of free free knowledge and free education free courses (laughs) exactly like ours yeah you can learn all kinds of good shit like i i just came up with a great idea (laughs) and it's not my idea i stole it for the imagine, love of God, please, imagine please ten thousand songs, ten thousand songs in your pocket. Imagine that. I call it the i the i bod, the i um, All right. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's ten ten thousand songs in your pocket, or the i you, you can't you can't listen to them. It's just where you store them. It's ten thousand songs all playing at once, all the same time on the i Only in your pocket. You can't only, hear it. only in your pocket. You can't. Yeah. As soon as you take it out of your pocket, it stops. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just steel. this cacophony of nonstop noise in your pocket. You're steel welcome. Good ideas. That's what I yeah. do. So, um, <laughs> But also, I, I'd like people to, to listen to this to the next time they're going through the downtown area or they're seeing homelessness in, in their town or wherever they live, to actually go, rather than look at it and go, that's, that's sad, but I guess there's life, go, that's sad, and there's actually a really good proven way of dealing with this, and it's in my country. <laughs> Right, so like I guess this is just uh, a, this is just a policy choice. So this what would you do? Like write your MN, write your MNA, your MLA, and suggest like, hey, look, look to medicine at you, fucking bozo, bozo, yeah, you fucking yeah, bozo. You, that's you that's plum. a term kids are using these days, right? Hey, fucking Malin, bozo. Check this out. Hey, you Alan, Blanca, my <laughs> Alan. That's a good idea. Hey. That was a that was a nice episode. It was a good feel a feel good good news episode. So yeah, there, there is hope. There is hope, and um, yeah, it's good. My 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 most favorite part of that is the fact that they they were able to provide housing for like over four hundred children. That's amazing. I can't think of anything much more important than that. Uh, yeah, that's well, that's that was a nice episode, Reese. Thanks for that. 
Yeah. So uh, I, I know normally, like you said, I'll, I'll have to find some crazy drunk people for the next one, though. Just yes, please. It out. Um, what is the next episode, by the way? I don't know yet. I'm gonna. I'm literally gonna go and find the craziest drunkenest part okay. of history you can find all right so we'll, if you're we'll new to our if you're new to our podcast uh hit that subscribe button so that you'd be sure to be notified when reese comes back with the craziest drunkest insanest episode yet according to him his words not mine <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> i think i think i've uh i've uh I've set a trap for myself that I might get caught in next in a week's time. So. so because we are uh, just just to continue on from last episode, um, we are on track to Halloween. It is September, I know, yes, but we are on track to Halloween and we are going to be doing a ghost story at the end of every episode until Halloween. And I like it's you say we. Well, okay, Reese is going to be telling a ghost story. <laughs> I suppose I could interject and tell a ghost story now and then. Um, why not? Okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll give you three things to base it on, and you've got to improvise it. Oh, no, I was going to tell a real ghost story. A real one? There's no such yeah. thing as a real ghost story, but okay. No, but like, so it's either going to be a ghost story from, from Reese and I, or I, at, or if you would like to tell a ghost story, dear listener, please write to us at CanadianPoliticsIsBoring at gmail.com, or you can leave a, sp- a speak pipe message. Although, I don't know how long speak pipe. It's only 90 seconds. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, if it's so. a quick, if it's a quick ghost story, if you want to write it out, though, send us an email, and we will read it with music and sound effects on the show. It's more of a ghost sentence. Uh, I'm gonna just hold on a second. Um, Actually, I've got a really good ghost story I can tell you. Okay. Okay. Cool. Go. So. Music um, and sound effects, please. And, I've got, I've got, and and this is actually a real go. one. I was told, and it's from Wales. This is a real one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I actually really like real ghost stories. So I, I used to make a uh, a TV and radio show called The Ed Explainers, which was a, a mystery comedy improvised road trip mm-hmm. show that looked into the paranormal and mysteries that couldn't be solved. And it we was went, very funny. We went looking for. Um, it was also a stage show once as well. Anyway, uh, we went. We were we were deep in the mountains of Snowdonia, and if you if you go to Wales, the what's northern Snowdonia? Half, Snowdonia is a region of Wales that is very mountainous. Lots of like narrow Snow. mountain passes and so no some people say that is a more deadly mountain than everest because the weather changes so fast so people will think oh it's only just a small mountain in wales and they'll they'll go up there with a proper kit and then suddenly the weather will change within like five minutes and you won't be able to find your way down and you'll freeze to death up there. so it's it's quite like a treacherous dangerous place but it's like stunningly beautiful so we were up there recording and we were looking for stories of um giants because there's a lot of giant mythology and there was this local man who had researched a lot of stories, and he was telling the story of, of the Grey Man, and and they in this particular village up in the with, mountains. Hold on, the the Grey Man with um, the Grey Man, yeah, with uh, Le- Liam Neeson. No, no, Ryan. Um... Oh no, that's just Netflix. That's just a rip off. <laughs> no, so <laughs> Ryan, what's his name? Ryan Gosling, and that's uh, it. Thank you, Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans. Yeah, yeah. Um, I only watched the first half of that. I didn't get around to watching the rest. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so the up in those mountains, there was a there was a legend of the Grey Man who was a giant, and when it was really foggy and misty, um, you wouldn't hear or see him coming until it was too late if he went up too far into the mountains when it was misty. And this was a story that they told um, lots of kids at the time as like a uh, kind of a cautionary tale to stop them from wandering off, which is you know a lot of stories at the time and mythology, local mythology, there's a point to it to stay away from that river or don't kind of climb up that cliff. Right. Um and and the story was that the grey man was a giant who lived high in the mountain. He thought he was the king of the mountain and he had this big gold chain um and he was this kind of hideous giant who would capture and then eat children, much like Justin Trudeau. Um (laughs) so Um, but the crazy part about this story was there was an archaeological dig uh, a few a few years ago, and they found uh, a, a huge grave, uh, and they they think they measured the body, and at the time the the skeleton of the body of the body that was there the remains would have been about six foot five and you think the age of it it was probably about a thousand years old this grave, so back in time if you think people were a lot shorter then 
So this they person were? would have would have been considered a giant. People were short back because, in the time because they had didn't have such a a good diet. Oh, okay. People on average were a lot shorter, uh, especially in Wales. People in Wales are generally shorter anyway because of a bad diet. You just can't eat, can't live off lamb. And um, the crazy thing was that the the skeleton also had a giant chain around his neck. <gasps> Why? And the moral of the story is, it's like you hear these crazy myths and legends about these things, but this one was there was some evidence that it was grounded in truth. And the, what's the what's the, the chain part of the story though? Well, the What's giant, that? the gray, the, the the gray man who used to come over the mountains had a giant chain around his neck. I did say oh, it I, earlier. I skipped. Just, I just glossed over skipped that, that bit. And that the the giant skeleton they found also had a chain. So it might have been based on some form of reality. Exactly. Some mountain man who just wanted to be left alone and to mount as child abductor was real. Well, that's crazy. Wow. Okay. Is that the ghost like story? That's a ghost I was, story. I mean, I wouldn't call it a ghost story, but it was like well, a, because there's an element of actual provable science. No, you well, yeah, and there's no ghosts. That's scary. <laughs> See, that's, that's scary to me. The gray, the gray man. Oh, like he kept, he kept like his ghost kept. Yeah. Well, some, sometimes like I think it's called the gray. Sometimes called the gray king as well. Was another. Oh, I like it. that better. That's nice. That's kind of yeah. cool. Sure. Oh, that was cool. That was creepy. I like that. All right, I'm going to change the dear listener. Send us a real ghost story to CanadianPoliticsIsBoring at gmail.com for us to read and add music and sound effects to, like Reese does, because he loves work. Right. He loves all this extra work. He loves it. I'm going to piss off now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to play this again. Just to... Hello, Reese and Jesse. My name is Justin. No, 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 no. Stop. Stop. No, stop. stop. And I've been listening to you guys Shut up. for a couple oh, years. Stop it. Kill and it. I've got to say, it. Stop I it. love listening to your show. Now, my wife, she hates it. But that's because <laughs> I to, sorry, I wanted to hear that again. I hate you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs>